Ashley. Hello, how's it going? I'm good, how are you? Pretty good. This is so weird to like actually see you um, instead of just like listening to you on Spotify. <laughs> yeah, we're doing it. I'm happy yeah, to have you here. Thank you. It's actually really funny because like I tried ignoring you, like that video that went viral. I was like, I'm not going to deal with this today. I'm like, I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to think about it. And then like it kept coming up like five times on my For You page every time I refreshed it. And I'm like, okay, this is a sign. It was nuts. Like, I don't know if that happens with your For You page, but like I just keep getting the same videos that pop up randomly. And so I'm like, okay, so I follow the... Uh, the podcast on Spotify. I'm like, I'm not going to watch it. You know, I'm not going to listen to it. I'll just like follow it. And yeah. then I watched the first episode. I'm like, great. I'm hooked. And I watched like 10 of them within like two days. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. So, <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Um, so it just like chills on my Spotify playlist. And, like, I'm so afraid that like, if I listen to it too loud in my dorm room, like people are going to hear it. I'm like, this is going to be so awkward to try to like explain this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's tough for people to overhear that and not uh, and not question. Uh, and not question it, yeah, exactly. Inquire a little bit, yeah. <laughs> no, I haven't had that experience on my for you page, but that's it was the same video. It was the same video, like the one that you went viral for. It just kept popping up, and I was like, oh, I guess like I gotta watch it now. Um, and then <laughs> it just just trailed me into like this addiction of like watching all these videos. Well, I'm yeah. so psyched that that, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry I kept shoving it in your face, but it sounds like it was okay. a, a good outcome for sure. Yep. <laughs> well, Ashley, thank you so much for being here. What happened to you? Okay, so I don't really know. I, I, was, I, guess, I guess I'll just start at the beginning. Um, okay, so my parents were divorced re like when I was two when I was younger. Um, and I actually didn't know that I was molested by my sperm donor, which is my biological dad, up until I was 18. Um, Cause my brain just repressed all that, which repression is great until like your brain is like, you're old enough to deal with this. And I'm like, not at 18. Like I just moved to college, you know, I was just yeah. trying to like be an adult. It was so freaky. Like I thought I was going nuts for like the first like three weeks of school. And like the only reason why I found out it happened because I took like a general psychology class and then that we had like a whole topic about repression. It was a whole chapter. We watched like a video about like this girl realizing that like she was sexually abused growing up. And then I was just like, like it was like a that's so Raven moment kind of where like I was just <laughs> sitting in class and I was like, oh my God, like that happened to me too. Um, yeah. And then like I was like sitting in class like after everybody left and like the professor just kind of looked at me. And they're like, do you need to talk about this? I'm like, no, ran straight to my dorm room. Like for like <laughs> two weeks, I wasn't really sleeping that well. I was like at like probably like the lowest point, like mentally. Um, and then I like actually did go to like a counselor on campus. And I was like, I think I was molested. And he's like, how do you, <laughs> like, how do you think that you were? I was like, okay, well, hold up. Like, let me explain. Um, so that kind of like gives some background of like, my whirlwind of experiences with this um but wow, really psych 101 who knew that that was gonna be <laughs> oh that should probably be a mandatory class then i guess huh, that's pretty yeah for real like if you want to find your daddy issues go take <laughs> <laughs> the total totally. psychology classes um but so like growing up i like had a dream and it was like i guess like you would kind of classify it as like a flashback um, but like my flashbacks are really weird. Um, so like, like I said, like the that's no Raven moment, like I just kind of like, it's like weird deja vu. And I'm like, I swear I've like been in this situation before, but like I can't visualize it until like that night when I'm like having a dream and I was like, okay, I'm not making this up. Like this happens. So like my, I don't know how your flashbacks were or like how they are, but like, that's kind of like how mine are. Yeah. Whereas what I've noticed is I don't really get flashbacks anymore at least in the same way where it's like this thing that I'm worried about happening. I had them happen in high school a couple of times and it would basically just be, it was oftentimes when I was drinking for whatever reason that would kind of trigger it or it would be like a different emotion that I felt that would be associated with the emotions that I was feeling while I was getting molested. Fear or uh, anger or worry, something, I, it felt like uh, similar emotions could cause me to be put back into that mindset. But then as a result of, of talking about it, I find myself not being worried about thinking about it anymore. So because I'm not afraid of it popping into my head, I think it pops into my head less. And then when it does pop into my head, I'm just like, oh, okay, you know, nice. Like, it's not like a thing that I uh, am, am really afraid of happening. So it's, yeah. and that's why I'm all for, you know, think about it as much as possible, you know, go back into, and, and it feels like before I was at that stage, when I would think about these things, it felt like I was reliving it. And it, mm -hmm. it felt like, uh, not like I was getting molested again, but kind of. 
uh, yeah, just I emotionally. Totally yeah. So it's almost like when you put yourself back in that position enough times, you realize like you're okay. You're not getting molested and, and you're totally safe and you can go back into these experiences and sort of actually deconstruct what happened and how you were feeling and allow yourself to feel those feelings without worrying that maybe it would happen again. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely gotten a lot better, <laughs> for <Yeah>. sure. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, please uh, continue. Um, and so like, I always had like this dream. I was like on this couch. I always hated this couch growing up and I never knew why. And now like, I'm like a 22 year old adult. I'm like, huh, this makes sense. Like the full <laughs> circle kind of thing. Um, yeah. where on this couch, sperm donor was next to me. Um, and then like, he would like grip my inner thigh. And then like, that would be all I would remember. I would like wake up super like panicking, but like as a 10 year old, you don't really know like a panic attack <laughs> Of and so and I was just like freaking out I was like he would never do that like kind of thing so I'm like he's my dad and now I'm just like he's my sperm donor totally two different things um and so when like I would just shut down those dreams and like just because of like what was happening growing up um and so when my parents divorced and I was super young um, the reason why they got a divorce is because he was a paranoid schizophrenic <laughs> And That'll I like it. joke, I joke about all this, by the way, like, this is why I like failed group therapy, because I joked about it. I was like, yeah, I was just molested. This is why I have daddy issues. And like everybody, like the therapist is like, actually, like, you can't say that. Like, I got like three other people crying. I was like, I don't know what else to say. Like, I don't know what else to do. Like, this is so, so awkward. Like, everybody's like talking about like, oh, they got kidnapped and like, they got raped. And I'm like, I just got touched. And they're like, that's really wrong. I was like, well, I don't know how else to talk about this. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it, I would have loved to have been in your group therapy session for that. That would have been perfect. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's not for everybody. <laughs> yeah. So I told, like, she actually like reported me to like my therapist. So like on campus and was like, she cannot come anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they and, kicked like, you out of group therapy? Well, that's hilarious. You know you could do that, but apparently you can. Um, yeah. And so like my therapist is like, this is not how you cope with it. And like, literally I joke about everything. Like, that's just like, kind of like how I deal with it. Um, yeah. I'm like, I'm not a comedian by any chance, but like any means, but like, I just, that's just <laughs> yeah. what I do. I make other people laugh saying stupid stuff. Um, well, that's like, basically exactly what a comedian is. So uh, yes. <laughs> you might have to give some stand up a shot. Ooh, I might have a, I might have a shot. Maybe, like, why did I go to college for four years now at this point? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think about that every day. <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, don't tempt me. I'm like 22 credits away from graduating. So I just need to. Hey, hit me up when you're done. We'll, uh, we'll hit some up with mics. It'd be fun. Ooh, exciting. Um, so going back, um, basically like he's a paranoid schizophrenic. He had problems with drugs and alcohol, mainly alcohol growing up. Like I never really saw the drug side of it. Um, and then he also had DID, which is like dissociative identity disorder. (laughs) So it was a whole cocktail of like, it wasn't like if anything was going to happen in the house, it was more of like when it was going to happen, um, growing up. And I guess like my mom, like, she knew that, like, something was going on, but, like, my little repressive self didn't know what was going on, and mm-hmm. so I repressed everything um, because I had a sibling, and the other sibling I grew up with, like, they went through pretty much the same thing. Um, I was always told they had it worse than I did uh, because they remembered everything, and I was like, not me. Um, you know, I only, <laughs> I only had the couch dream, like, that. I mean, like, how do you take that to a jury and be like, oh, yeah, by the way, like, I had this dream, but, yeah. like, I don't know how else to explain it, uh, because, like, I was so young, like, when they were kind of, like, going to trial. It wasn't, like, a trial. It was kind of, like, just to kind of gather evidence. Like, they were, like, trying to get with the school, because I was a very angry child growing up. Like, I seem, like, super nice and happy-go-lucky, but, like, I literally, like, CPS got called on my mom, like, I don't know how many times, because, like, I would just scream in my room and, like, slam my door <laughs> shut. It. And, like, the cops came over, they're like, is someone okay? Like, we, like, I live by a whole bunch of old people. So, like, we were the only young family in, like, the 10 other houses on our street, where, like, it, we, we, like, said it, like, smelled like perm juice, like, down the road. Uh, because it was just like all these old people and so like when I was like growing up and like kind of like trying to process like what was happening and the only way that made sense to me was let me slam my door let me like shove my head into the wall which sounds like super like weird and whack but like that's just like what my little self thought growing up was you know okay Um, hey we all think crazy things when we're little I totally (laughs) feel you you said that your sibling they knew they remembered everything that was going on. They had a yeah. similar experience. And then yeah. you said that you kind of went to court. 
Yeah, so, like, they were trying, I know my mom, and then, like, our side, like, so my mom's side of the family, we all live in the same town, like, it's really rural northern Michigan, where we live, like, super small town, it's a village, Um, and so, like, they were, like, trying to get, gather all this evidence, you know, trying to, like, make sense of, like, what was happening, because, like, my sibling, they knew everything that was happening. Like they never repressed any of it. Like mm-hmm. they were living it and like processing it kind of like what everybody else has been like on this show. And then here I am just like, I don't remember anything <laughs> until yeah, I was 18. Yeah. And then like, when I told my mom about this, I don't think I was, I think I was like 19 when I told her because like, I just kind of like reached a breaking point. Like you, you can only hold this in for so long before like you kind of explode. Um, and I exploded like at my house, like full on, to my mom I was like you know like the thing that happened with my other sibling and then she's like oh yeah like I know I was like well it kind of happened to me too and she's like kind of and I was like well it did um yeah. and then because like I didn't know like it took me forever to like actually like be able to say like I was molested um because like part of me was like really ashamed of that because mm-hmm. like it kind of makes me feel like gross I'm like oh like great I can't have a normal life and I'm like this is like my daddy issues 101 kind of thing Oh, dude, um, same, completely. I mean, that was exactly what happened to me. Like, I, I yeah. w- literally could not say that I had been molested. It was my mom having to ask me, like, if it had happened to me. And then I was like, yeah, yeah. but I, I, I didn't know what to do. And I didn't want to really say that. But yeah, you just get to a point where you can't take it anymore. I was yeah. totally empathized with you there, for sure. Yeah. And so, like, during that time, like, so I was, like, in elementary school. Um, and so, like, we would get, like, one, like, this kind of, like, trial thingy, maybe whatever it was. Like, I don't think it ever went to trial because, like, we didn't have enough evidence um, mm-hmm. But, like, I would always get pulled out and, like, be seen by this counselor. And, like, I remember her vividly. Like, she literally was my counselor up until, like, sixth grade. And I was, like, in second grade. So, like, she was always asking me questions, like, do you know the difference between a good touch and a bad touch? And I was, like, of ah, course. Classic. Like, if anybody touches me, like, that's a no-go. But I think they're, like, really trying to, like, see if I, like, if anything happened to me just because, like, I was his favorite kid um because ironically like so his family spoke really whack like they're all just kind of crazy themselves uh, which mm-hmm. doesn't surprise me how he became crazy um <laughs> to be honest yeah um so my other sibling they have like brunette hair and blue eyes and i have blonde hair blue and green eyes and i looked more like my sperm donor and everybody else on that side of the family well my sibling they did it and so that's why they got the grew at the time of what I thought of the abuse, which is like mm. crazy to think of. Yeah. Um, and then like, it was so you like, think okay, because okay. your sibling looked different from the rest of your family and that's mm-hmm. why you think your sperm donor decided to molest them. Yeah. Like it was like a, like kind of like a, not a tradition in our family, but like every <laughs> time we went to like, not like, okay, not like saying like they got molested every single time, but like, I'm just yeah. saying like in terms of like the abuse, cause it was like emotional, mental mental, physical abuse that like was always happening to when I was growing up. And so they got the brood of it because everybody down, like they're originally from Chicago area. Um, And so since they didn't look like me and everybody else on that side, they basically got like shunned out. Um, And like, we're told that like, you look just like your mother because like my mom has brown hair, like blue eyes. And they're like, it's just like a whole thing. And it like, I'll like kind of explain it like as like the buildup of like where I stopped talking to him, like officially cut him out of my life. Just to make sure I have this right. So your sperm donor is your biological dad and he was the one who molested you. Mm -hmm. But he was still like a part of, because when you say sperm donor, I assume that that means that they're not a part of your life. No, they were, he was a part of my life. But he was. Okay, so. I was like 12. 13. Okay. So he was the one that you, your mom and him got divorced at, at two. Yeah. He's your biological dad, but you didn't have a different dad that you grew up with. No, not at that time. So I didn't meet like my mom, she got remarried a whole bunch of times, like, I think, okay. like three other times before she actually like found like her high school friend, which is like super weird. They were like BFFs in like high school. <laughs> sure. And then he like at 13, when I still like cut off all ties with my sperm daughter was when he, we actually moved into his house. And then that's when he kind of came up to us and was like, Hey, I've adopted like three other kids. They're biologically not mine, but now they're mine. Do you want to do this? Like when you turn 18? And I was like, totally. Like I just want this guy out of my life. Um, because like my sperm donor, like when he found out I was going to college, he tried opening a parent plus loan through FAFSA in my name. So then he can use my credit score, which I don't have a credit score because he freaked me out, um, and like use my loans to buy drugs and alcohol. 
Oh, um, and like classic. he drained my account growing up. Like I didn't have a college fund um, when I graduated because he drained that all for alcohol. And so like when I found out that like he was trying to open a parent quest loan in my name and like my university called me like, who the heck is this guy? Yeah. Like just trying to like open this account in your name. Like basically the university's like, we flagged him for fraud. I was like, as you should, because legally he's not my dad anymore. Because when I got adopted, like literally I remember going to the court and be like, and the judge just be like, do you understand that like, if you get adopted, you don't get anything of like your sperm donor's property. Like you don't get any of his assets. And I was like, there wouldn't be that much anyways. Yeah, like, just a couple <laughs> of died. handles of Tito's. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And like, he was obsessed with the Chicago Bears. So like, I'd have like all this memorabilia. I was like, I freaking <laughs> hate the Chicago Bears. Absolutely hate the Bears yeah. because of him. At age 12, that's when you started cutting things off. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I... When, like, so we, when I had visitation with him, it was when every Wednesday and every other weekend that I was supposed to go to his house. And so like growing up, that's what we did. Like between like me being two all the way up until I stopped like really cutting off ties with him at 12. But the funny thing is I don't remember like age six through like 12 at all. Like wow. it's just gone. <laughs> like, yeah. And so I'm thinking like that's when it started happening because at that point, like my sibling, they're two years older than me. And so mm -hmm. if you think about it, like they could have been too old for him. And then like, I was the next best thing. Cause guess what? But two years younger, it makes yeah. sense. And so like, I think that's why I just like, my brain was just, like, you have to deal enough with like the paranoid schizophrenic side of him. Like he literally like growing up, I remember like locking my Self in my closet like to get away from him which seems mm. like so absurd and like really super sad but like it's honestly kind yeah. of funny like little me like hid in the closet because his fat ass couldn't fit through the door <laughs> that's a pretty good defense mechanism yeah, yeah or like we had bunk beds uh with my other sibling in the like in the room and like i always was like i'm sleeping on the top bunk no matter what because it was in a trailer so like the ceiling in the trailers are like super short and yeah. so he couldn't fit his fat butt up the ladder if he wanted to like <laughs> do anything with me sleeping and i think yeah. that's why i hated the couch so much because like that's where everything really much happened was like from what i remember basically like with those like that's so raven kind of moments mm -hmm. um and like those like nightmares is like on the couch and like if i had that couch like if i inherited that damn couch from him like before i like cut off all times them i would like burn it uh yeah. to be honest totally but, but yeah, so like growing up with like that abusive side of him, like I think that's like all like my little head can handle at that point because like he would tell us like go and take out the trash. And I'm like, okay, I got to pee really quick. It's so, like I go in the bathroom and go like just go to the bathroom and I come back out and he like flipped a switch, like totally a different personality. Like there's like an angry one, a paranoid, like a more paranoid one than him normally. And then like one that was like super loving and caring. Like those are like the three I know. They didn't have names, but it was definitely like, those three were like the major things growing up um and so like i would walk out of like the bathroom and like go take out the trash and he was like i told you to take out the trash like two minutes ago and like you didn't do it and like he threw the trash on the floor and then like stormed out and i'm like what just happened yeah. and i like picked it up and took it away and like he came back with gifts from like the gas station that was around the corner and was just like, I'm so sorry. Like, I didn't mean to blow up with you, like at you and stuff like that. It's like, I just didn't know what was happening. I was like, what is going Whoa. on? Yeah. So it was, it's not like in the movies, like it is like a light switch moment kind of thing. Um, but like definitely like TV shows don't really show it in my opinion the right way. Cause like growing up, it was, it was so weird. Like they didn't like be like, oh, my name is like Larissa or like some stupid and be like, I like to dress up. Like, yeah, sometimes they are, but like other times, like it's just like a different side of him that mm -hmm. wouldn't come out um and then like more abuse would happen where like my mom like he wouldn't feed us good and like when i mean feed us good it was like mrs grass chicken noodle soup and tater tots like every yeah. single night and yeah. it took me <laughs> it sounds like so stupid but like i literally couldn't eat mrs grass chicken noodle soup for like 10 years <laughs> after like it's just so gross like and now like it cures like all my stomach aches but like I literally would see it at the store and I'm like I would like kind of like gag a little bit I'm like that's so nasty course, we would, yeah. like, eat that all the time growing up and so like my mom would like send us over with pork chops to like make like shake and bake kind of pork chops like he can make um and then like the little dick would like cook it on his own and eat it in front of us and it's like oh here's Mrs. Grass chicken noodle soup and tater tots I'm like Bro, what the hell? Like, those are our pork chops. Like, Brutal, yeah. Yeah, so I think that's, like, really what kind of happened, like, and I was just trying to, like, survive and deal with that. Um, because, like, in my town, like, growing up, 
course was really taboo. Like, I mean, like this is like early 2000s. So mm -hmm. like growing up in like a small town, like the church didn't really want to affiliate with us. Like my mom, like, so we tried going to church. That didn't really work out. Cause like my paranoid schizophrenic sperm donor was like, that's a cult. Don't join it. At the same time uh -huh. as he like locked us up in his room. And like, we were like, had like a candle. It's like a really, Really weird like criminal minds kind of scene like to be honest <laughs> we're like in front yeah. of this bookcase and he's like reading his books about like nazis like taking over germany and he's like the nazis are coming out to get us i remember looking at my sibling and i'm like what is going on <laughs> like yeah growing up i mean like sh like they were two years older than me so like they kind of understood what was happening and like i know they protected me a lot growing up um but it was just weird he wasn't on meds and like that's why they got my parents got divorced growing up and so like that kind of took it like where we just didn't affiliate with the church and like the town kind of looked at us differently like I know like growing up in school with the whole like trial thing kind of the teachers would like look at us differently like mm. as like different students so like they wouldn't take like special time to like yeah you're not going to be like successful I think that's like why I want to be a teacher too is because I'm like oh my gosh, like, I want to be that teacher that I needed growing up because I needed a lot of help apparently growing up. <laughs> I didn't do good at all in school, like, especially during the time of, like, between I was, like, six and 12. Like, I couldn't tell you, like, in sixth grade what I did that year before because mm -hmm. I just didn't remember. And, like, and so, like, academically, like, I declined because I just, like, couldn't remember anything. And, like, my teacher's like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> like, you're, you don't even know how to do, like, simple math, which, like, I'm not good at math anyway so like that was like, already a bad <laughs> idea <laughs> yeah, yeah. and well, like all these teachers like you know after like growing up and realizing like all the signs of like getting abused both like mentally emotionally and then like sexually like how, how did nobody realize like what was happening with me like being an angry child like just not doing good academically like it just kind of like makes me wonder like how many people like kind of like thought something was going on but they didn't say anything yeah. Um, and then it wasn't until like, I remember in middle school, I got pulled away because like our school was in the lockdown. And then like someone came to like pick me up in my classroom. And I was just like, okay, what's going on? And they put me like in this closet. And they're like, is your biological dad's like supposed to pick you up today from school? And I was like, what is going on? I'm like, we're in a lockdown. And apparently he like the paranoid side of him like came out to like, he was trying to pick up my sibling and I from school. And he set up a full lockdown because, like, he was having, like, a mental breakdown because he was trying to take us on a vacation um, on a Tuesday. And it's funny because, like, my mom put him on the no pickup list, which is absolutely hilarious because, <laughs> like, when you're put on, like, the no pickup list, like, you cannot be, like, pick up anybody. Like, at the time, you're not even supposed to be on, like, that school property. Mm. And so, like, he triggered this, like, full-on lockdown. Wow. And I'm just, like, chilling in this closet, like, with this, like, the same counselor I had from, like, second grade. I was just want to eat lunch. Like, I was, like, so focused on because we had Bosco sticks. And I was, like, I just really want to go get some Bosco sticks. And she's, like, well, no, you can't go out in the hallway because, like, we're on lockdown. I was, like, well, can you give me Bosco sticks? Like, I know I was just, like, so fixated on that. And, like, yeah. the counselor's, like, what is going on with you? <laughs> Ah, so the closet really was the uh, the the safe place in uh, real, school I and mean, home. To be, yeah. To be honest, um, and so like, <laughs> I'm so obsessed with Tabasco sticks. Like, I is that like a stick cheese that. stick with Tabasco in it? Pizza sauce, and then it's just like a cheese filled breadstick. And you oh yeah, yeah, yeah. love those. Uh, ah. And so like, really, after he set off that lockdown, it wasn't the first time he did that. That was it happened like two other more times, and before he was like officially like not allowed on school property. So it's interesting that people had that reaction to your family's court experience. Yeah. Like, why do you think that was? Like, did they know the reason that you guys were going to court because of what happened with your sibling and your dad? Or I think they must have. Like, I knew a principal did in the elementary school um, because he was really trying to make the case because it was like classic, like my sibling, like, and I, like, we would pee our pants randomly. Like whenever we, like, we got yelled at, like we would start like peeing our pants. And then like, obviously like, <laughs> that's not a good idea. Like not a good sign. Um, and like other teachers, like, I think I like started connecting the dots. And so it became parent where like, my mom was like, I'm trying to do this. Like, how do you help me mm -hmm. kind of thing. And so that principal in particular, like he supported it like full on was like trying to make a case, but I don't think it ever went through just because like if it did go to trial, it basically gets shut down because it was only one child's experience. Like and it sounds like so messed up because it's like it's only one child. That other child, like if they were in the same house, they should have been going through the same thing. Um and then 
it's like a whole thing but that's like that's what I remember like we don't really talk about it at our house like because like the really what kind of like started this whole thing of like going to trial and like having a case was because when I was at my my mom's house my cousin like he was watching us and I remember I was again sleeping on the couch but like he didn't do anything he was like perfect cool cousin um and like my nightgown was like around my neck and I started choking and so he unraveled the nightgown but I told my sperm donor and he saw that as oh my gosh like I think it must have been jealousy or something because he's like I'm not the only person like touching her and I was like what <laughs> like is going on and so like he yeah. ended up like not staying at our house like he like we didn't even talk to him for like a good two years um and like so never your saw him. donor saw your cousin trying to save you <laughs> and, yeah, and took that as him trying to molest you too yeah like yeah wow. i'm pretty sure because like he when i told him about it he was just like well did he touch you and i was like of course he touched me because like he was trying to save me and i mm -hmm. think he just spinned it and like cause he was trying to get full custody of us which in no right mind would a judge give him full custody yeah um, because like every time like my mom would pick us up like we had like sunken in eyes we just were pale because like we were eating good he ended up getting not remarried but he had like a fiance girlfriend thing which is really messed up because she was like 20 when she started dating my sperm donor and, and he was how like, old he was like 35 <laughs> yeah. it was so gross i'm pretty sure she was like looking for like a sugar daddy kind of thing i was like he's literally mooching off the system like you yeah. couldn't have picked a worse <laughs> candidate for this and the funny thing was she was actually a social work major at the college she went to and when they had their first kid my half sibling we were always told that we couldn't change their diaper and I was just like, this is so weird because she must have known what happened to us growing up. Like she must have had an inkling of what was happening because like my one sibling, they couldn't like change the diaper at all, at all. Couldn't even go by her when the other sibling was naked. And it was like a baby, like, like yeah. an eighth month old. And, and I was always told like, you can't do anything with the child unless like you're being watched. And I was like, this is like so messed up. And then, like, I remember one night, my other sibling, we were playing footsie. And, like, we put our feet together, we're, like, wrestling, and then we accidentally, like, hit each other in our private parts. Like, and then, yeah. like, 20 minutes later, a detective showed up, and, like, all these cops showed up to, like, interview us. Because, like, they thought, like, my dad's girl, whatever, girlfriend, fiance, piece of crap she was, um, whatever you want to call her, uh, basically, like, thought that, like, we were like touching each other like willingly and it was like an innocent accident and so it was like a whole thing like i wow when i tell you i got daddy issues i got daddy issues yeah. <laughs> that's super interesting when he saw your cousin helping you and he asked you if he touched you you guys hadn't had a conversation at that point about him touching you had you no like honestly yeah. like at that point like i think i just didn't understand because like i was so young like obviously i was between like six and 12 or whatever right. whenever i stopped wearing a nightgown so, like obviously like when someone's like oh did they touch you like you don't think as a kid like oh he touched me like in the cooter kind of thing like no yeah. it was more of like he was touching like my neck to like unravel this nightgown that was gonna choke me and like mm -hmm. ultimately like possibly kill me and he was just being a babysitter and like doing his job and so it's like so messed up and like it makes sense like why i stopped wearing nightgowns because like in that dream i was wearing a hannah montana nightgown i remember hannah montana very specifically mm -hmm. um and <laughs> I literally i just remember like going to my mom's house one weekend and just be like i need to throw out all these nightgowns and she's like why i'm like because i'm a big girl i need to wear pants yeah. and it's because at my sperm donor's house like i do remember this now like he never let me wear underwear because mm. it just made it easier to get access to it and i'm just like this is so messed up of course and so like for like and then like we always had like i don't like obviously like, you didn't have like your molestation happen like from a dad like it was like from a friend like it was a dad but like it wasn't like yeah dad friend's dad. dad yeah and so like my sperm donor would like make us like take baths with him and it was mm. weird like mm -hmm. we were like eight and like we had to take a bath with him and it was messed up and I'm just like growing up, I'm like, I will never ever, like for the longest time, like, I didn't want to have a kid. So I'm like, I had such a messed up childhood. Like, I don't want to have a kid. Like, and I found this out recently that like being molested is like kind of a trend in our family. Like it's either a touchy uncle or a cousin or like a brother or a dad. And I'm just like, 
glad to know I'm not the only one in this darn family that has gone through this, but I'm the only one that literally repressed it all. And How like, did you find like, out that it was a trend in your family? Um, that's when I told my mom um, mm-hmm. when I was like 19. Um, because like, like, I'm not gonna say it was a mental breakdown, but it was pretty darn close to it because like what happened was like, I hadn't been sleeping for like a consistently about like two years at that point. Like I would go to college, like I would literally like pass out, have that dream, like cause that whole dream of like on the couch, like finished where like, I remember like him doing stuff to me and then like me doing stuff to him mm-hmm. because he would make me on that same couch. And like, I felt like I was losing my mind and like, I wasn't really accepting that it happened I was like oh it didn't happen it's just a dream whatever but then like I got my first boyfriend at that time and he was a dink um and (laughs) just to put it politely like I think I only dated that guy just because um I just everybody I knew was getting a boyfriend I was like everybody thought I was like a lesbian in high school because I never dated anybody which makes sense because I didn't want anybody to touch me I was just like I'm just gonna literally do everything possible to keep myself as busy as I can so I can't think about this um and that's what I I did and I did the same thing in college too I took like 18 credits every semester I literally had no chance for me to like have downtime until I had to drop like two four credit classes and it dropped me below 10 credits and I could still live on campus it was just like really bad professors like not a good time. Um, mm-hmm. So I like dropped it to save my GPA and I became bored and I was like, oh, I'll download Tinder and like meet a guy being like as innocent as I am. I was so naive and innocent growing up. It was so bad. I'm um, like, I didn't really understand like sex ed until I went to college. I'm like, this is horrible <laughs> like, <laughs> at all. Um, and I think that was like also my brain like repressing it too. Cause like they had like a whole, like, I don't know if you had like sex ed growing up, but like they had like yeah. a whole thing about abuse. And like, I just remember like leaving the class and just like sitting in the bathroom trying to avoid it. And I think that was like just me like kind of like protecting myself too at the same time. And like, even like my teacher was like, are you okay? I was like, I just had like a bad lunch, like just food poisoning or something. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, I ended up going home and my mom's like, oh, what was happening? I was like, I just ate a bad taco at lunch, something like that mm-hmm. um, to kind of avoid it. So when I dated this guy, it was like only like a month and a half thing. Like it was super, like it was just a fling. Um, and when I dated him, we saw uh, a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Did you see that movie? No, but I love Mr. Rogers. Yes, it's beautiful. But there's a lot of daddy issues involved in that movie. Uh-huh. Um, and I didn't know that. I was just like, oh, it's going to be Mr. Rogers. It's going to be a great, happy-go-lucky movie. And like as we were watching it, the guy like put his arm, like his hand, in the same exact damn spot that my sperm donor did in that dream. And like instantly, I like full on had a panic attack in the movie theater. We're like the only people in the movie theater too, which made it like, I guess, kind of better. And I just had like the worst stomach ache ever. I had like such bad acid reflux. And we actually had to end the date because like I was like throwing up in the bathroom because I was just like so upset about it. Um, Mm -hmm. And then that's when I was like, oh my gosh, like I really probably should be taking therapy more seriously because like obviously this is affecting my day to day life. Um, more than it had been before than it's like just sleeping. Have you already had psychology at this point? I had my uh, psychology class in like fall of 2017. So this is like winter of 2019. So we're like already like a year, two years into college at this point. And so we ended the date. We ended up like doing another day at his place. Mm -hmm. Um, And I must have like a sign above my head whenever I meet boys that are just like, we victimize this girl. Like it must be like a neon sign that just flashes. Um, Because when I went over to his place, we watched like that Scooby-Doo, like that Skull Island movie, which is like so stupid, but it was like on Netflix and we're like, we got to watch this. Like just talking about this yesterday. That's so weird. (laughs) Just randomly. haven't talked about it in years and now. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I know the movie. Yeah. So we watched it and this dude, he's a bigger guy. I don't know why I like bigger dudes, but apparently that's like a trend. Um, so like, sure. he's a pretty big guy. And so we're watching it and then like, things kind of get like hot and heavy. And I'm like, no, like, I don't want to do this. He's like, are you Catholic? I was like, hmm, no, definitely not Catholic. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> Similar you know, experiences just, though. Yeah. I was like, I just really don't want this to happen. <laughs> and then like, I don't even know how this dude did it. Like he rolled over and pinned me down on the bed. And then my like eyes were just like, okay, this is actually happening. And my brain is just like, do you fight or flight? And I'm like, my mind was just like, you're going to like flee. And then like, this dude is humongous. Like I'm like 150 pounds, five one. And this dude is like almost six foot, like 
couple hundred pounds and I'm like, okay, I cannot flee. And so like my mind was like me and the balls <laughs> because like at that point, like I was like thinking, I'm like, okay, well, if I need to, I will. He tried to kiss me and I like, I put my hand up. I was like, no, I told you no. And he's like, oh, come on. Like you're just playing hard to get. And so I was like, my brain's like kick him in the balls. And so I did <laughs> nice. like, full on need him. And then like I jabbed him in the throat and then like I just ran out. And then I went back to therapy. I was just like, uh, this is a little (laughs) awkward. Um, And so then that's when I like basically took off a year of dating going into my third year of college because I realized that like this is affecting me more than I thought it was originally. Mm -hmm. Um, And then ironically, my therapist left. I was like, great. He left campus. And then I went back to like do like another intake. So I had to like see a new person. And then she literally said, your issues are too much for me to handle. Like you have to go somewhere else to like talk about this. And I'm like, girl, you literally are like focusing on trauma. (laughs) Like at that point, she's like, we'll go to this like sexual assault place. I was like, I wasn't like assaulted because like in like, at least like here, like, I don't know if it's like this, like in a different state, but like that whole like me too movement, there's like a clear divide between like getting abused as a kid and then like getting sexually assaulted. Um, and like, sometimes there's this gray area of like, people are like, oh, you were just molested. And that's why I like, I had that assumption of like a therapy. I was like, oh, I was just molested. Like, you know, you all got like, you know, raped mm. and stuff. And so it was like really hard for me to like find someone to take me in because they're like, oh, you just had childhood trauma. Like you have to go and see a therapist, which that meant like my insurance had to get involved. And when insurance gets involved, then my parents know about it. Cause like my mom didn't really know I was like seeing anybody to talk about this. Mm-hmm. Um, she thought I was just dealing with that on my own, which funny to her that she thinks I could deal with this on my own <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing. Like I love my mom, but I was like, how can you not see this? Um, yeah. It's, it's interesting with the me too movement. Cause I sort of felt similarly just seeing all of these people coming forward, which is obviously awesome. I, the more people that speak out the better, regardless of the mm-hmm. experience that you've had. But I think part of it is that people who have been molested are oftentimes not like when it happens to you, you're not at a point where you're able to articulate what happened very well, yeah. if at all. And when the more time that passes, it feels like, you know, the easier it is to just not continue to not speak up, to just stay quiet. And I feel like there needs to be this integration of molestation and childhood abuse into the Me Too movement. And it should be as prevalent as the Me Too movement is right now. A big part of it too is that people, not that people don't get uncomfortable with rape and things of people who are adults, but particularly with children, it seems to just be this thing that people like really don't want to come to terms with. Yeah. Uh, That it happens and at alarming rates. It's obviously very popular with this podcast. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes, exactly. So I, I think that really just comes down to people like yourself speaking up about it. And you never know how many people have experienced similar things, but just by being open about it, you'll, uh, you'll find out pretty quickly. So um, yeah, no kidding. But yeah, it, it is kind of wild. We definitely need to have it be more of a me too for kids type thing. Yeah, going on. for real. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's like, it's like, I don't even know like how to like approach it. Like, I think that's why I did so bad in that support group. Cause like some people, like it did, like they did have like childhood trauma, but it like evolved, like it happened their whole life. And I was just like, well, it just happened to me like in five years. And that's, that's like kind of like gave me like this assumption of like, oh, it's really not that big of a deal. And like, I don't say like, I don't like the Me Too movement. It just like, it makes me uncomfortable. Cause it's like, how can I like, you know, get to this point where like, I feel comfortable in this setting to like talk about this. But like, if I were to put like, you know, hashtag me too. I'm like my Facebook page. Everybody's gonna be like, oh my God, you went to college. Like who did this to you? And I'd be like, hmm, yeah, <laughs> kind of funny. Cause it wasn't anybody at college. And like, I just wish that like people, like especially like teachers understood more that like, this is a lot more popular and like, yes, it's awkward, but then like it turns into this, like at least we're doing this in like a healthy way. Cause mm-hmm. like I have like the other siblings and like cousins and stuff I have, like they have turned this into like such an unhealthy thing where like they turn to like alcohol dependence or they're just like so obsessed with sex um, to the point where I have like so many nieces and nephews at this point. And I'm like, can y'all like (laughs) slow down? (laughs) And it's like so uncomfortable because they're like, you know, I always get like pestered by like either like my mom or like now my dad um, who adopted me where he's just like, you know, at some point you're going to have to do it if you want to have kids. And I'm like, I could just adopt. (laughs) Yeah, totally. (laughs) And it's just like so awkward because it's just like, you know, they're like, well, your mom's out with it. Like they got over it. Like you should get over it too. And I'm like, eh, a lot easier said than done. And like, your mom dealt with it. Like she got molested too. Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. She had the same thing happen to her growing up, but like, 
I think it only happened like a couple times. I don't think it like happened for like a chunk of her childhood. Cause like for me, like I said, I don't remember from like six to 12. Mm -hmm. And so obviously something was going on from six to 12. And like the more I have like flashbacks and stuff, the more I'm like piecing it kind of together where like the more that I don't remember is because that was like the worst it got. Like where it wasn't just like him doing stuff to me. It was like him making me do stuff to him. Yeah. And like for the longest time, like I was so disgusted with that. I was like, that is disgusting. Like how can you make a child like literally do that? Mm -hmm. um, and like pleasure himself with like my hand. And I'm like, this is so gross. Um, but then I was like, wait a second. Like I was like eight there's no way that I would have been okay with that, like understanding it. If I had the head of me right now and put it in an eight-year-old little kid's body, no way would I have been totally okay with it. And like, I think that's like the thing I struggle with is just like understanding that like you didn't consent to it. Like someone yeah. obviously like abused their power and like did that. So I don't know if it was the same with you. But we all do that. We all go back into those experiences with the mindset that we have now. And we just think about how ridiculous we were to have not just done something different. Why didn't we ask for help? Why didn't we tell them to stop? Yeah. Yada, yada. I mean, there's an infinite number of reasons and things that we could have done differently. But the reality is, just as you said, it was not a situation where we were able to consent. In fact, it would have taken, we were 10 years behind uh, <laughs> until we were able to consent. I totally get why we all do it, but it doesn't serve any purpose, you know, to just like beat up on your old self for, for not behaving different. Yeah. Um, but it's hard not to. And I know a, a number of people who did say yes at that age. And even in that scenario, that is not consent. You Yeah, they didn't. Obviously, they didn't know any better. Exactly. Like, I was like obsessed with sex, like growing up. My poor little pet shops, like I always made them like have sex. Like my other sibling and I would like always do that. And like we went over to like friends' houses and like we would do that and like, though like our friends were like what are you doing and i'm like wait you guys don't understand sex and they're like how do you understand sex i was like oh <laughs> like kind of thing <laughs> did you say but pet shops like little pet shops like this little like a barbie just like on a tinier scale yeah. um and so like these little pet shops like they had like their own like houses and stuff and like he would always buy us little as pet shops growing up like my uh -huh. stepdaughter would every time any abuse would happen and it was like so weird because like he had like no money like i don't even understand like how this dude afforded that stupid trailer that we lived in like half of our childhood because yeah. like he was just mooching off the system like he literally did everything in his power to not pay child support i think it got down to like where he was literally paying like 20 dollars in child support for my sibling and i every wow. week to my mom that's not even like enough for us to like get groceries for each kid and so like it sounds like so messed up like the more i talk about this but honestly like it makes me happy that like you're not like sitting there like crying like, in, like <laughs> <laughs> of course not <laughs> but it actually made people cry like felt so bad i was like Wow, and that's like the worst thing. Like when you when people react yeah. that way, and you know, it's not that people are meaning to make you feel bad. It's just a reaction to it. But as a victim, you're like, oh fuck, I forgot. That's how people view me and what happened. Yeah. To me. And so I completely get where you're coming from. And it is so much better when people don't judge you. And I think a big yeah. part of that is not judging your own experiences, getting to a point where you're like, okay, this happened. And like, there's nothing that I can do to change it, but I can totally change my perspective on it. And yeah. I think the more you accept yourself and what you've been through, the more you're able to accept what everybody else has been through mm -hmm. and who they are. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, oh, oh sorry. No, no. Um, I'm, me with relationships, it's really hard. I don't know if that was like how it was when you first started dating. Cause like I've never dated in high school. Like, cause I just never even opened that avenue. Like that's why everybody thought I was freaking lesbian in high school. They're like, oh, you never slept with anybody. I was like, this is really awkward. It's yeah. like, how do I like explain to you? Cause like at that time, like, yeah, I beat you guys to it. Yeah, you just don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah by a number of years. <laughs> beat you to the race, man. Yeah. Um, but like, I didn't, I didn't know at that point. I was just like, I just don't like to be touched. I full on like would freak out if like someone would brush against me in high school, like mm -hmm. in the hallway, I would like flip out. And like all the teachers were like, uh, you okay? I'm like, oh yeah, just having a bad day. It's like, it's that time of month. And like, I think all those teachers most of the time I was like freaking like an emotional roller coaster of just like blowing up at people that like would like accidentally like touch my thigh. Like that really like for me is like so hard. Is like having yeah. someone like touch that same, like my left thigh. For, it's just the left one for some stupid reason. The right one is okay. The left one, not okay. I got into a year relationship 
And this is like at the point where I'm like, I'm going to be open with him. I'm going to tell him everything that happened. I told him like, if like, I don't have sex, like, I hope you're okay with that. Like you can do whatever you want to please yourself other than cheat. And I'm like, yeah. you can do whatever you need to. But I was like, for me, like, it's a no go. Like I'd rather have a relationship that's like not all around sex. Cause like at college, like that's all everybody wants to do. And I'm like, I want like something that's different. And I was going to tell him, but the guy didn't tell me that he had such bad depression that like it reminded me of growing up with my sperm donor um, up to the point where it was just like he always had to have me like help him through his episodes which like I had to do with my sperm donor like to get him through like his bad days like I had to cook for him I had to clean for him and it like didn't get to that point like where I had to do that but it was just like I always felt like I had a child and and then I was just like I literally had like this realization during quarantine so we did during the whole quarantine thing and like yeah. in Michigan like the whole state shut down like literally for about a good like two and a half months where like you couldn't travel from like downstate to up north mm -hmm. um and I'd go to school like 150 miles away from my house and so like he was from like Detroit area I was from the northern part of it and so like that was like the best time I was like long distance relationship no touch no nothing perfect like <laughs> yeah. I need to do this more um kind of thing um and then when quarantine got over he actually ended up moving up north like where I live and then he started getting like more like I want to like we should have sex and I'm like oh no not ready for this mm -hmm. uh kind of thing and I got to the point where like I, I never told him because I didn't think he could handle it because like he was dealing with his own problems and like he ended up like abusing drugs and alcohol with like his aunt like depressant like antidepressants and then I'm like eh, this is like history repeating itself I don't like yeah. to say history repeats itself I'm like it sure does rhyme kind of yeah. thing and I was like <laughs> yeah. this is like really awkward so I ended up cutting it off with him and then I ended up getting into a relationship with another good friend of mine uh down at school and I was actually open about it. I was like, this is what happened to me when I was younger. Like, if you want to run, this is a good time to run. I flinch all the time. And like, I feel so bad. It's like, I can't like shut that part of my brain off. And I think like, that's what I struggle with. And like doing this is like, obviously like making me like freak out a little bit. Like I was so scared to do this, but now it's just like nothing. Like, to be honest. I love um, it. Yeah. It's like, it was like, I was literally shaking before this. I was like, this is going to be so awkward. This is going to be so awkward. I literally was like <laughs> opening my laptop. I'm like, why am I doing this? And now I'm just like, we're like an hour in, like my face is like probably red as a tomato, but like we're yeah. going through this. Yeah. I'm so <laughs> glad that you, uh, that you powered through. I mean, I know the feeling it, it it's similar to doing stand up about it. It's like, wow, yeah. like this is, is this, real? is this really what I'm going to do right now? And then you do it and you're like, I'm so thankful to have just like powered through the, the nerves. And, uh, so so that's great. I wanted to ask you a little bit more about when you uh, spoke up to your mom initially after yeah. you had psychology and you realized all these <laughs> things were happening. Yeah. Can you talk about that experience and what it was like? How did you, how did your mom get to the point where she ended up telling you that the same thing happened to her? Um, so it was kind of weird because like we have a lot of family stuff going on at that point. My grandma, we found out she had dementia. And so like my mom was just like always hanging out with her and like my homework from my therapist at the time was like you gotta tell your mom like you gotta tell somebody because like I didn't tell anybody like at that point it was just like HIPAA was the only thing like from like me telling another person I was like there's no way I don't want anybody to think I'm crazy because like that was the thing I didn't want anybody to think I was crazy because like when you come from like a house that's so mentally unstable and you say like oh my dad had paranoid schizophrenia everybody looks at the statistics I'm like oh you have a 50 50 shot of you becoming a paranoid schizophrenic too. And I was like, no, we're not gonna look at those statistics right now. I am just like trying to live my life as a normal human being. And I also got put on like sleeping pills, but they weren't sleeping pills. So they're meant like if you have depression um, to kind of like sedate you a little bit. But if you don't have that wiring in your brain, right? Where you do have depression, it literally knocks you out. But it's not a sleeping pill, so it's not addictive. And so I started going on those. But when I popped one of those like little 25 milligram pills, um, I slept for like 17 hours straight mm. and I woke up in for like two hours and took a four hour nap. I literally slept the whole day away because like yeah. I literally haven't been sleeping for two years. And so like my mind was just like sleep kind of thing. And like yeah. I didn't have nightmares. It was perfect. And then like three days went by and my mom is like, you need to tell me like what you're on. Because like she knew I went to my doctor for my physical and like she almost called the doctor's office to break HIPAA and be like, what in the world did you give my daughter? Because like she's sleeping and like she's totally depressed. And like I was like, I need to tell her. I can't tell her. I literally was like on a deadline of like three days before I left for school again. Cause it was like winter break. 
And then I went upstairs and we got in like this really huge argument. And then I ended up going downstairs and like slamming my door shut. And I was just like, it was just about like having my mom, like spending all of her time with her mom and like never having enough time to like, you know, talk with me. And I need to talk to her. And she's like, well, we want to talk about it. I was like, I can't talk about it right now. Cause like, it has to be like this, like, two three hour thing where like you can't be doing anything you can't have like any other prior obligations because like obviously like it's an important thing to talk about but like she was just more of like oh god she's pregnant kind of thing. Right, <laughs> which yeah. i'm like no it's definitely not that and i ended up like going on a like, hunger strike i didn't eat at all that night didn't go up to dinner mm. and then i went upstairs that next morning and my mom didn't have anything going on that day and i was like i gotta tell you something and then that's when i told her and she's like oh my God, <laughs> like mm. kind of thing where it's just like, you know, the same thing happened to me too, you know, but like it was with my cousin, but like from what I understood from it, it was only like a one and done thing. They ended up like removing that cousin and like she just never talked to that cousin again. Um, and then I was just like, well, from what I remember, this is like, because I, at that point I only knew what happened in the dream. I didn't remember like me doing anything to him, him like doing more to me or anything like that. It was just strictly that dream. And she literally was like, if I would have known, like, if we could have gotten this information out of you when you were younger, like, you wouldn't have had to go over to his house anymore. I was like, well, (laughs) (laughs) sorry. And (laughs) I was like, sorry to inconvenience you. And then we just never really talked about it again. And then, like, we found out one of my cousins that's, like, really close to their family, like, she kind of went through something similar with her half-brother or, like, whatever. It's, like, a whole thing. Um, and then like my mom would kind of like talk about it more and be like, oh yeah, like, and like have me like sit in on those conversations. And I'm like, this is really kind of triggering. This is really uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Cause then like my aunt knew and then like my uncle knew and then like more people kind of like knew, but they didn't know the extent of it. And then it just like was this like really awkward thing, but like, we just really don't talk about it anymore. So my sibling and I were, we worked at the same grocery store. I was a bagger. They were a cashier. We made a dream team bagging up groceries. Mm-hmm. Um, and like he would come in and he would like insert himself in our line. And then he would have our half siblings or like he would catch us like as we're stocking aisles with our siblings. And like, they'd be like super excited to see us. And then he's like, they really miss you. You should really come over and like hang out with us. I was like, this is really messed up. He literally got banned from that grocery store. He (laughs) couldn't come in because he just like kept stalking us. And he would send in like family friends to be like, you should really go see your dad. I was like, he's a sperm donor, not a dad kind of thing. And that's where like the whole trend of using sperm donor for everything kind of came from. Um, And then I haven't talked to him. Like, I know he wants to see me, but I'm just like, nope. Now that I know everything, I was just it's like, yeah, I will literally probably punch you in the balls or something. Um, and or yeah. kick you there. <laughs> Did it <laughs> once, I'll do it again. Can't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For real. I mean, like, at that point, like, I know I can do it. I'm just like, just give me the right thing. And like, it's so funny because, like, with my boyfriend now, like, I literally tell him, I'm like, uh, by the way, I fight. I don't fight. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and he's like, just don't hit me the boss. I'm like, I'll like throw a punch you instead. He's like, just don't do that. <laughs> Yeah. So how did you get to the point where going from the initial experience of having this dream come back into your head and then progressing more to having more and more memories coming back? How did you get to the point where you're at now where you felt like you were able to come on here and speak publicly about this? Well, it kind of like all happened really recently. So like when I broke up with my boyfriend um, that was like dating for a year, I was like, I need to stop dwelling on this and like pretending it didn't happen because like obviously it did I think that was like the hardest thing for me and like then your podcast I was like because like you really feel alone when you first start this because like even like going to that support group no one was really victimized as a kid like it happened to them like when they're old enough to understand it and it's like you feel like so lost and like and it didn't help I've been taking like all these freaking psychology classes for like the education program yeah. <laughs> they literally like have whole chapters devoted on like, sexual like abuse and how it's different from like sexual assault And it's so weird because it's like, I just found out about this four years ago and I didn't have time to like process any of this when I was younger. So like it literally like a crazy roller coaster of like emotions and like, um, and so like when I found your podcast and I like finally like the heavens, I don't even know what like happened to like me having to find this video like six times or five times (laughs) on my four year page. And like I watched, like I listened to your story. I was like, dude, like he went through repression too. And like, we kind of went through the same thing. And I'm like, yeah, like 
every story is not the same, but like we all have like the same feelings and stuff like associated with, you know, getting abused as a kid, and especially when you're so young, you're literally going through puberty yourself. So you're like, Oh, I kind of liked it. But then you're like, wait, like that's my dad, like kind yeah. of thing. And I think that's what really disgusted me in a sense. Like, how was I okay with it? How did I actually enjoy it? You know, mm-hmm. being so young and I'm like, wait, that's stupid. Don't say that. You know, I was like nine when I started my period. It was a really weird time. Like, I remember like also like him like giving me like shaving tips down there. And I was like, that is like really not a good thing to talk about. And, like, I just remember that like vividly, like growing up, he's like, oh, this is what you do for razor burns. And, yeah. <laughs> well, it's classic, <laughs> classic molester <laughs> conversation where it's just like trying to normalize these things talking about yeah. Yeah, it's not weird for us to be discussing this kind of stuff. Sure. I mean, like taking a bath with him at 10, totally normal. Yeah, um, exactly. Anything that they can do to sort of make it seem commonplace is uh, is definitely in the cards. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and then like when I binge watched like 10 episodes, it was nuts. And I submitted that video. I was like, I literally submitted it. I was like, how do I go back and unsubmit it? Like, how do I tell him like, I don't want to do this anymore? And then I was like, wait, like you have literally been doing this for four years now. And I'm like, I want to have a quote unquote, whatever the frick normal is life move on like not move on but like just like turn the chapter over and be like yes it happened like yeah I still flinch like when things get hot and heavy like I do cry and it really freaks out the other dude and I'm like so sorry but like it kind of like evolved to the point where like a couple weeks ago like when I submitted that I was like I'm just done like I'm done feeling bad for myself like I tried journaling I'm like journaling sucks this is so (laughs) stupid like it helps some people but for me I'm just like why do I have to write a letter to this dude? Like being like, why did you have to judge me? Like, yeah. like, or, um, I think so a big I'm, part of it is like, there are all of these different methods for healing yourself. And I think a lot of people do get discouraged when maybe the first or second or even third thing, it doesn't seem to do the trick, but there is something that will work. And you just got to keep trying and not be discouraged by whatever experience you have with whether it's journaling or for me, meditation has been like the most helpful thing out of anything that I've tried. Really? Yeah, definitely. Especially for like anxiety and and, and that kind of stuff, Mm -hmm. but it's different for everybody. And um, yeah, you just got to, got to keep trying things until you find something that works. Yeah. It's just like, I just, I need to be talking about this. I need to be open with it. Cause like for my therapist, I'd be like, Oh yeah, I had a flashback. And she's like, do you want to talk about it? I'm like, okay, no. And she's like, okay, we don't have to talk about it. Like we can just turn it on. I did that for like a year and a half. Mm-hmm. And then like, I had like a flashback. Like it was like where I found out, like I did stuff to him. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, I had this really bad flashback and she's like, do you want to talk about it? I was like, Nope, but I know I got to. And then like ever since then, it has been like so much more easier just to function as a human being. <laughs> Like just Love talking it. about it because I'm like, oh, I feel like I can continue on my day. It's a part of you, but like not in a bad way. And like, I think that's what I've gotten to accept is like, it happened, but it doesn't define who I am, which took me literally like four years. I'm like, I wish I could just like slap my younger self and being like, can you just snap out of it? Like, yeah, it happened, but like, it's not your fault. You didn't ask for it. For people that have been dealing with something similar, especially with repression and things like that, what kind of advice would you give to people who have been through something similar? Uh, For me, I just wish someone told me it's okay to be overwhelmed because like you literally have like deja vu and you're just like instantly like snap out of it. But like it literally happens like over a second and you literally feel like it's happening like within like an hour of like having everything like come back to you. And then it's how do I deal with this? And I'm literally like sitting there and I'm like, uh, I'm not going to be able to sleep. And like, and then I force myself to not sleep because I'm like, great, I'm going to remember this. Like it's kind of like a trend for me. And then it's totally different for everybody else. That's just like how I repress stuff. And it's like, not like textbook repression, but like, even my therapist is just like, that's kind of cool. I was like, it's that cool. Um, <laughs> and kind of thing. Um, cause she's like, she's never heard of it being like that before. Like it's always been like a flashback where like you understand it all. It doesn't happen like over the course of days where yeah. like my flashback can literally take like a full week for me of literally just like doing the bare minimum where people ask me like, are you okay? And like, I literally have like eye cream for like when I have those days and like mm-hmm. weeks where I can like put it under my eyes. So like nobody knows, like I'm getting no sleep, um, which is so for bad, sure. but like, I guess just like, it's okay to be overwhelmed and like take it your speed. Therapy is like really your own pace. Like there's no, you have to meet this deadline. And I think that's what I was like looking for in therapy for the longest time was like, you have to meet this deadline. And, like, I think that's why, like, my first therapist, like, gave me that, 
you know, like you need to tell your mom before you come back for winter break. This is like, you've been literally talking about this all semester, like having to talk to her, like you need to go and tell her. And then when I finally did, I was like, huh, that wasn't that bad, even though like we're all crying and like, what else can I do? And then like, I started like taking bigger steps of like telling the people I was seeing, like, hey, like something happened when I was younger. And then like being able to the point where like now, like my relationship, I'm like, yo, I was molested. Like it happened. And like, I understand that like I flinch and I try not to. I like you, <laughs> yeah. but you kind of remind me of my, like, you don't look like him, but like, you kind of remind me of like a very time, like a time in my life where like, I didn't know it was happening. And like, for yeah. me, it's, it's just like being okay with not being okay and having Definitely. like someone else know it sounds horrible. Like you don't want to tell anybody cause it's like, you're trying to deal with it yourself, but like the only way to really deal with it is to tell other people, either it's like a therapist and or like, my mom in my case even like your significant other because like once they know like something like triggers like especially for him like he always asks me like is it okay if like we snuggle or like and I'm like no it's not okay tonight he's like okay that's fine and I'm like wait someone that actually respects my boundaries like that's really fascinating to hear having that like healthy relationship with yourself and just being like it's okay to like not be okay which sounds like so cliche but no, like it's, it's so true. And mm-hmm. I agree completely, especially thinking about therapy and recovery and how there's yeah. no rush for it. Like you said, it feels like, especially when you're dealing with comparisons and you look at other people who it feels like they've recovered completely. And regardless of how much time that took, you're going at your own pace and yeah. feeling like you need to go faster than you are is only going to make things worse. It so, does make it hundred percent worse. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think just recognizing that there's no time frame that you need to meet for any of this stuff and it'll happen. You just have to be willing to take the steps that are necessary in the first First one, I think, just as you said, is telling people, speaking up. And uh, it really does feel so freeing when you are able to do that. So um, I'm really glad that you decided to (laughs) not unsubmit the video. And uh, yeah, like I said, I was literally so nervous doing this. And now like, I feel like I can literally like have my day go as normal because I literally like blocked off my whole day. Like I have to work, like I get like the phone at two o'clock to like be on duty in my hall. Um, And I was like, full on like ready just to be like I'm just gonna lay in my bed all day like this isn't gonna happen and now I'm like I just like want to go like it's 50 degrees outside of Michigan I'm like I'm gonna go in hammock outside in the cold like (laughs) and stuff like that so like honestly I love it yeah this has made me feel like it's just nice to know like that this is like like a safe place but it's not like a typical safe place we're gonna have fun with it instead of like making it super serious because like I was like so certain I'm like I'm gonna cry like this is it like I never talk about this like not cry and I'm like wait, I haven't like even shed a tear. Like I'm freaking smiling more than I would yeah. be. So, <laughs> I love so, yeah. it. So I just want to thank you for like doing this because it just makes me feel like I'm not different. Um, and like there's people out there that are the same. Oh, well, thank you so much for saying that. And the yeah. feeling is so mutual. I just want to say thank you for reaching out. Because like I said, I didn't think that you would actually reach me. I was like, it's just going to be buried. Like he's never going to find this. I was like, I'm not too cool. Like my trauma's not good enough to be on here. Apparently it is. Hey, it's all qualified. Yeah. You know, there's no, there's no set thing that you have to go through or anything like that. Right. It's just being open about your experiences. When I found it, I was like, wait, these are my people kind yeah. of thing. And then like, now I'm like watching all of them. I was like, this is kind of crazy. Like how yeah. much we all have in common. And I know. It I just really want to say like, thank, I can't say thank you enough for doing this. Cause like, it just seems like so comfortable for me to talk about it. And like, just to share like my really whacked up childhood experience. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so right. much, Ashley. Yeah, thank pleasure. you so much too. <laughs> we'll talk again soon. Okay, beautiful. See ya. All right. See ya.